guys, this is Angela from We Are Family Homeschoolers and today I'm going to talk to you how we homeschool 6th grade with the ADHD child. Subjects covered will be language arts, math, history, social studies, science, health, physical education, cooking, violin, and art. I'll give you a quick view of the books we're going to cover and then we'll get into it. Got our violin up there on the wall. Social studies and history back there. Bible, cooking, health. Stack of reading books. Language arts. Math. Okay, here we go. So you may not know, but most children with ADHD often have more than just an energy or focus problem. They usually have learning glitches. So our child deals with learning impairments in reading and writing and math. And I'm thinking from a mother's point of view, it could be dyslexia. So to get her ready for sixth grade this summer, we're working through dyslexia games put out by the Thinking Tree and it's eight workbooks and I've already done a video on these so go back and check that video out if you want to get a peek at what's inside real quick these workbooks take the artistic side of the brain and teach it how to read write and do math all through games and puzzles and logic and fun activities. So we're working through these now this summer and this September I'll show you how we're going to do sixth grade. Okay starting out with language arts our core grammar guide is going to be learning language arts through literature and this is the yellow book it's third grade skills it covers every language arts topic reading, writing, spelling, poetry All right. let me get you a glimpse into what this looks like okay at the beginning of a lesson, oh there's even cursive in here there's some map work there's book reviews let me just find the beginning of a new lesson. Okay. In a new lesson, there's always a literature passage. It says, write the passage from dictation or copy it. My child struggles with spelling, so in order for her to not hate school, it's best that we just copy it. There's always a small group of spelling words that follows a pattern. And here she, she does not do the unscrambles. We just cross that out and move on. It has grammar tips in here. She fills in the blank with her spelling words. These are short lessons too. There's always a reminder at the end of the day to, to cover your spelling words. The lessons take about 15 minutes. So here's a day three. Here's a grammar guide on what a pronoun is. Working through that. Cover your spelling words. Do a little enrichment. And that's it. And this is day four. Discussion with teacher, that's in the teacher's guide. Your spelling test, this is probably where you would put your dictation, but since we're not doing dictation, I'll either have her copy something down there or we'll skip it. Moving on, there's more enrichment. Those are your higher thinking skills. Day five. So lessons are really short and sweet in here. Covers um, a lot of grammar in a very gentle way and gets her cursive in there. It's not heavy duty on cursive so if you need to be more rigorous than this then you should add in a program. I like these review activities. They let you know um, what your child needs to work on. I use the assessments for quizzes. And here is a literature link. This literature link happens to go along with the book Meet George Washington which she will read on her own 
Here's a list of vocabulary words we'll go over together. If you don't have the book, they have a story right in here about George Washington you can use. There's discussion questions. There are um, important events that happen in George Washington's time and they want you to match it with a date. And then questions to answer. So they'll work on their literature link for about a week. And then they'll finish up and they'll go back to their regular activities. There's four books that come with learning language arts through literature. Um, the White Stallion, which we've already read. Meet George Washington. The Courage of Sarah Noble. And Madeline. So I plan on doing this curriculum two or three days a week. And mostly we want to stick with the creative fun schooling journals because she's a very artsy child and traditional schooling doesn't work for her brain. So, fun schooling spelling journal for ages five and up. Teach your creative child to read, write, draw, and spell 180 pages of fun activities. So, things like this. Pictures to color. Search your house for ten four-letter words, ten six-letter words, ten seven-letter words. Um, in the beginning, it started out with poems, and she would read the poem several times. Coloring's optional. She would color in the words that she needs to learn to spell. I think one of the little kids got this book and scribbled on it. We do have a toddler. Then she's going to write all the words in on another day. And then she's got to draw a map and search her house for ten three-letter words. And you can find them in books, on cereal boxes. It gets your kids up and moving and actively engaged in the learning process. So those are the word searches. Here is spell five words that could describe this picture. Ask someone to help. So there's a section on that describing the pictures. And then towards the end of the book, you're making your own comics. Then use every letter in the alphabet in only ten words. Not sure how that's going to go, but write a short story about the pictures. So that's how that spelling guide works. Um, we're also going to do literature and poetry. I'm going to try to get to this one uh, about once a week or as we can. Um, sometimes there are stories in here and sometimes it's a poem. So this one starts out with a poem and there's an illustration to color. And here she's supposed to copy down her favorite part of the poem. List your favorite words from the poem. Illustrate the poem. Write how it makes you feel. This one is uh, literature, The Wind and the Sun. It's an Aesop's fable. And then write your favorite part of the story. What's the main point of the story? Illustrate. Draw your favorite character. And then we have limericks. I'm going to read these to her because it's really important for children that struggle with reading to have... Um, literature read to them that helps them build their vocabulary and helps them to read with fluency. Um, so that's what language arts looks like. Moving on. Oh, she also has this stack of books she'll be working on. She's already started a few. This one, Hind's Feet on High Places. This one is really too hard of a read for her. But she loves the story so much, I read it to her last year, that she's really forcing herself to read it. So I'm really impressed with that. Um, books she's reading now that are on her reading level. Olivia's Secret Scribbles. Cul-de-sac Kids. The Spooky House. She hasn't started that one yet. And Polly and Buster. And Polly is actually, these are Usborne books, by the way, most of these. Um, Polly is actually a girl with dyslexia. 
and Buster has out of control emotions. So I think she's going to resonate a lot with that um, being ADHD and having some reading struggles. So that should be a fun read for us. Okay, moving on to math. She has been working on math lessons for a living education three. She um, really struggled with math for a couple years in a row and now we're finally moving slowly but surely. She has about a hundred days um, left of this one. So multiplication, division, stories, addition, subtraction, measurements, And along with that, we picked up Minecraft math skills. This is addition, subtraction, multiplication, fractions, story problems, number games, building challenges, cube crafts, and mazes. She does this one with her older brother. He has a Minecraft world, and if she gets so many pages done, she gets to follow instructions and build in the Minecraft world. So that really motivates her to get her work done. Okay, along with that, if she needs help, I do have these Right Brain Math flashcards, which I bought from masterbooks.com. They're set up like dominoes, and that's really helpful for her. And then I also borrowed this idea from the Thinking Tree. I made my own cards, 0 through 20. Um, we probably won't use that many. But um, what we're going to do is play card games with speed. And um, let's say we're trying to find all the cards that equal 10 or try to pair up all the cards that equal 8 or 11 and see who can do it the fastest. Um, so I'll be playing those with her. Okay, moving on to science. Science, we're working on 12 months in the forest. And I'll show you what this looks like. There's a spot where she can record the books that she's going to study um, she can write down any videos or any other books here that she used to get her information. Drawing pages, make a nature basket, curiosity cabinet. So there's a section for every month of the year. This one is January. Fill in the missing drawings. There's a poem about the weather and the animals that live in the forest around us. Then she illustrates and she has to think of a bunch of letters that start with a specific letter and this one is M. And then she takes the same poem and adds her own her own funny words in there. Here she reads something that has to do with forest animals and illustrates and writes what she learned. This one is color me, draw my food and habitat. This one is she's going to look up this specific plant here. Write its scientific name, what it's used for, where it comes from, where it's found in the world. And here she's going to pick an animal that lives around us, draw a male and a female, write its scientific and common name, color the part of the map where it comes from. Here she has to list the animals that live in our area. This one is like a little nature hunt. And this one is a little study on weather and clouds. Research your favorite hibernating animal. Use your camera to take pictures of nature and glue them in here. And then you move it on to the next month. Along with that, we're going to do another fun schooling journal called Pig Napped from Factory Farm to Family Farm. So it's a cute story about a pig that grows up in a factory and he doesn't know anything about life except for his tiny little stall and bright lights and the same food every day. And one day this organic farmer comes along and buys the pig and the pig thinks it's the end of the world. And then all of a sudden he discovers the world. There's vocabulary words in here. There's activities. She's going to read the story to herself. Then she's going to do some research. She's going to learn all about organic farming. Do some drawing. In the back of the book is a huge glossary of a whole bunch of farming words, especially ones pertaining to organic farming. 
And that is the majority of science. We do have science books she likes to read. Bugs, Big and Small, God Made Them All from Master Books. Um, we also have a stack of Usborne books that she'll be going through just for copy work and for um, filling up some of that reading time for science. Okay, the next fun school journal we have is Homeschooling Creative Girls. This is something she'll probably do about two days a week. And it's set up for one hour of reading time. Choose four books, or if that's overwhelming, choose just two books you like on any topic you want. Science, history, fashion, whatever. Um, you read each book for about 15 minutes. You can illustrate a picture or write something you've learned. Over here is copy work. Copy a paragraph or a few sentences from one of the books you just read. Over here, emotions and moods. How are you feeling today? Draw anything you want. Listening time. This is a good time to listen to an audiobook or even history audiobook or classical music. And you can draw about what you're hearing. Here is menu planning, writing out a recipe, more reading time. This is for the next day, more copy work. This is a math time page. You can watch a video or illustrate something you're learning in your math book. Handwriting practice. Pick a script you want to try to imitate down here. This one is her favorite, film study. Watch a documentary, an educational program, movie, or online tutorial. She, it, right now, is really into horrible histories and cooking shows. Um, she loves to watch National Geographic videos on crocodiles and scary creatures. She'll watch those. She'll write something that she learned and draw a few pictures. Here's a spelling time. Find 20 words with 8 letters in them. Here's a study and object lesson. Do you know what it is? What could it be used for? How would the world be different if it were not invented? And then back to reading time. Coloring page. Write down an inspirational quote, your goals, to-do list. Go outside and draw something you find in nature. Reading time. Copy work. Emotions. And it repeats. Um, this one she loves. She's already started uh, a couple weeks worth of work in here. So that'll be probably two days a week where we take a break from some of the other formal subjects and just let her study whatever she wants using this journal as a guide. For social studies as a family, we're going to be reading through here and there and people everywhere. How people in countries all over the world go to school, how they go shopping, how they do their chores, how they have celebrations. I've already done a review on this Osborne book. You can watch that video on my channel. Um, also, Lift the Flap, Questions and Answers about Plastic. This is also an Osborne book, and I've done a review on that one as well. Um, for history, she's doing with some of her sisters, early American history. Our goal, I'm going to keep it real small this year. We're going to study Pocahontas, Squanto, Jamestown, the Pilgrims of Plymouth. We're going to pop in some videos because she's a huge visual learner. And if we can move on beyond that, then awesome. But if we don't, that's where we're going to stay for now. Um, for Bible, she's been working on more than words. She's halfway done with this. Give you a quick peek at it. There's journal entries um, done by some kids that um, explore key truths about God. So this one is, I can worship God. That's one day. The next day is learning a Bible verse. This one has a picture study. Breaking down that picture, what do you see? What do you think's going on? The next day, character trait, being understanding, working with synonyms and antonyms and making flashcards. Color in a picture, we're going to talk about how is this picture showing understanding. This one is draw your key truth. 
and then write it down. And then here's the next week. I'm not sure um, how often we're going to get to this book. This one's a hymn study. Um, the kids really love this book. It's just there's seven children and there's one of me. So we get done what we can. We do have a family Bible every day um, that I read to them and we talk about it. So this one is extra. Okay, moving on to health. This is an old health book of mine from Abeka. And I didn't buy the new ones because they've redone them and compiled them. And there's a lot of missing information. So um, what we're going to focus on this year is safety and first aid and going through puberty. So we're not going to cover the whole book, but those are the important topics this year. Safety, first aid, what happens if you have an injury, and safety during the storm, and growing up. For fun, she's going to do Yum! School and Cookbook. She's already started working on this. This is really great for her because she is a visual learner. So there's pictures of ingredients and quantities and the tools she needs and instructions. And then she gets to draw a picture of how the recipe came out and she gets to journal about it. Did you learn anything new? How did it taste? Was this difficult to make? What would you do to make this recipe better? Um, in the beginning of the book, it does go over um, kitchen safety. So that's awesome. For um, fun stuff, she's going to be working on some violin, and she's going to be doing some painting and some art. And for physical education this year, she's just going to be, if we can, join a soccer team. If we can't, she's just going to be exercising, walking the dog, going swimming, outside playtime, things like that, and just keeping a log. Okay, thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have an ADHD child, I hope you saw something that would be helpful to you. Thank you. Please like and subscribe.